I'd like to start off with Psalm 67. God, be gracious to us and bless us. Cause your face to shine on us, that your way may be known on all the earth, your salvation among all the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you will judge the people with righteousness and guide the nations on the earth. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. The earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, blesses us. God blesses us all that all the ends of the earth may fear him. Lord, we pray that you will be made known to all the ends of this earth. Lord, let us do our part in praising you. So that your praise and your name and your reality are made known to the people we come in contact with. I decided to do a study on Philippians. In the last few weeks, I've talked about our need for God's wisdom God's discernment so we can live uprightly and live as Christians, live as lights in this world where so much chaos is happening right now and confusion. And I believe that Philippians really falls into that. When Paul first came to Philippia, Philippi, he didn't know anybody there. God just said, go over there, go over there. The people are ready for you. And so he went, he obeyed God. In Acts 16, we learn about this. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside. We were supposing that there would be a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had assembled. So the women were there. And there was a woman, Lydia, from the city, a different city, a seller of purple fabrics, a worshiper of God, was listening. And the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household had been baptized, she urged the same, If you have judged me faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. And it came about that her house became the center of the church of Philippi. And a movement was started among people who followed Jesus Christ because of this woman's testimony. And from that, this whole church sprang up. And this letter is to this church. And the, Paul writes with joy because he knows that the church of Philippi have been faithful. And not only that, but they are fully participating in spreading the gospel. So I call this privilege and position. Right now, it's kind of a bad word. You're privileged. You have a life of privilege. As Christians, we can claim that and say, yes, we are privileged because of Jesus. Yeah. We have position because of Jesus, not on my own merit, but because of Jesus. I am privileged and I have position. We have a position in Christ. We have our being, our place, and who we are is in Jesus Christ. That is a privilege. We are in a relationship to Jesus Christ as saints and servants. So my obligation as a Christian is not just to be sitting around saintly, but as a servant. It goes hand in hand. A true saint follows Jesus Christ who was hum who humbled himself and became a servant to all to death. That is the kind of servant that Paul is talking about. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including the overseers and deacons. So it's to everybody. It's not just to the special few. It's to all the saints who are in Philippi, 
to the overseer, so he's making them also responsible and accountable. And he, he is putting them on the same level as everybody else. Nobody is extra special. This is addressed to all of them. As children of God, our Father, his grace and his peace are given to us. <clears throat> Verse 2, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So our position and our privilege is that we can call God our Father. And he bestows on us grace and peace because of Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you, in, in, my, in view of your participation in the gospel from the first day to now. So they've been faithful. They've participated in the gospel. They're spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. They understood the work that Jesus did. They understood that he transformed their lives. He has given them new lives. In Christ, we have a new life. Number verse 6, I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. I am so thankful for this verse. He will perfect my life. If I keep my eyes on him, that prize will be won because of God doing the work through the Holy Spirit. Verse 7, for it is only right for me to feel this way about you all because I have you in my heart since both my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are partakers of grace with me. For God is my witness how I long for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this I pray, that your love abound more and more. How does our love abound? How does he pray that our love abounds? More and more in knowledge and discernment. So it's love that discerns good from bad when there's failure that needs rectifying and when there's encouragement that's needed. This is the love of God. Seeking to help each other to become better and better and more complete in Jesus Christ. So that you may approve the things that are excellent, that in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. So love that has knowledge, discernment, is sincere, and I think blameless is a huge word in here, isn't it? That we are blameless. There are words to really fix on and say, how can I be sincere, and how can I be blameless in my walk with the Lord? Having been filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes from Christ Jesus. We don't get the fruit of righteousness on our own merit. It comes from Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives us the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. Those are all components of being righteous. And suddenly that word righteous isn't quite so daunting, is it? Mm -hmm. We look at those words, those fruits of the Spirit, and we say we need to be practicing those things. Patience, love, joy, peace, kindness. How we need kindness in this day and age. Gentleness, self-control, and faithfulness. Those are things God longs to build up in us. Build me up, Lord. Teach me your way. Give me your discernment. Give me your understanding. Fill me, Holy Spirit so that I can rise up above my wants and desires and follow you. God views us through the lens of the blood of Jesus Christ. We are sinners, but God sees us 
as children, his children, because of the blood of Jesus. We don't, we are not sinners in God's eyes. We are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. These points can be condensed into three aspects of our privilege and position. Number one, we have a new status in relationship to God. I am his beloved child. Number two, we have a new life. Life as saints and servants of Jesus Christ. The best thing is my life in Jesus Christ will be perfect and completed. Not today, not tomorrow, but it will be. And we have a new community. We are able to call each other brother and sister in Christ. We are a family. Amen. So we have community. New status in our relationship to God. We are his beloved children. New life. We are new creatures in Jesus Christ. And a new community. Fellowship with each other because of Jesus Christ who binds us and ties us together. Who says, love each other as I have loved you. 